Rumor has it you were a big time gamer in China, when did that turn into a career in fashion photography? It is very true. I was near a professional gamer before pursuing my studies in classical painting, mural painting and engravings. Precisely, I started my career as fashion photography in 2018. What was the pivotal moment that things really started to change for you in a legitimate way? The groundbreaking shift to me was when I fulfilled a complete antidote issue with my own work. Bit by bit, I began shooting for magazine covers of prevailing reputation and recognition. Then I went back to China as a result of the global pandemics where I surprisingly received campaign requests from luxury houses and editorial requests from leading magazines in the industry. Thanks to it, I am lucky enough to build a connect with stylists such as Gabby, Haley, Sabina, Imru, etc. that I am highly admiring of. Given your exceptionally non-traditional background in the industry prior to making a pretty big foray into the space, where have you historically drawn inspiration from and who would you consider your muse slash s today? My inspiration draws from my dreams, the milieu of video games I played, the whimsical universe of the comic books I read, perhaps more importantly, from urban tales that are not convincing to most people but seems to me a parallel universe of more quintessence. Sometimes, my journeys and my understanding to life can be a form of my story and even simpler, a bug, a mushroom or a flower plays a vital role in my enlightenment. You have an exceptional imagination and seem to be quite excited by the endless possibilities found in technology. What's your favorite part of the process when creating? How has it changed along the way? I do like investigate into new technology and put it into application. Imperceivable to most, my process is to explore the endless possibilities by thinking nothing to achieve a state of void and reacting to surroundings with my sheer intuition. But sometimes I go to a polar position by conceiving, completing and conceptualizing a set of stories. I even manage to have lucid dreams and endeavor to reconstruct these images into my set as much as possible. Recently I am bewitched by AI for its convenience. It fuels to visualize the abstract world without little effort. Your work feels almost unpredictable, eclectic, and framed from another dimension. How would you describe it? Since my childhood, I was briefly aware of my dreams. Now I know it is called lucid dreams which I have been learning to gain its control. For me, this is receiving signals from another dimension. What type of narrative do you want to create with your images? Or is there a particular feeling you're trying to provoke when putting them together? There isn't a fixed type of narrative, it changes accordingly. Occasionally, to orchestrate a new story, I make most of images and color palette that are seemingly irrelevant but in fact supportive of each other. It is more a process of self-liberation or self-transcendence. To be honest, what I value more is the pure action of shooting than the adrenaline rush of seeing the final images. Your portrait work is often incredibly intimate and personal. How do you establish a connection with your subjects? Prior to the shoot, I will make a survey in an unconscious way and ask myself, why this person in this moment? Like what Roland Barthes said, it is the adventure on photography that makes it most attractive. When photographing, I try to feel their magnetic field and build a world in which I am communicating with them. Sometimes, the targets are expressive enough to be self-evident. Your work often explores themes of identity and cultural heritage. Can you tell us why these themes are important to you and how they influence your artistry? I would like to explore and investigate more identities, diversities and heritages before my physical body is in six feet under. Each shoot is a self-upgrade program. Animals and nature are often featured in your work. What about animals and nature intrigues you? The force of human being lies in spirituality and wisdom, but we are equipped with a weak body. What fascinate me most of animals are their intuition, technique and vitality that we humans are dwarfed by. I especially like to discover new species that I have never seen. It keeps reminding me of paying the respect to the nature. Can you tell us about what the near future might hold for your latest explorative adventures? As mentioned, I am absorbing into an AI world. It is incredible although my friends don't get it. 
AI is such an efficient tool of increasing our self-awareness and I totally believe it can be the technological singularity of our era. Do you believe there is life at the center of the earth that those of us on the surface just don't know about yet? I am a huge fan of the hollow earth and all urban tales. I've studied it for quite long. For example, it is probable that the moon is a weapon to control the earth. There is a cave in the south pole and the north pole respectively to the interior of the earth. The archaic humans could live for millions of years and they are endogamous so aren't of our species. Aliens and gray aliens are carrier of alien awareness. More than 10 kinds of aliens, some are kind to us and some are not, live on the earth. I believe that our ultimate goal is more than running after the career which may function as the contraints impeding us to pursue the essentials. What's next for Theo Lu? You will see.